Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about lightning, specifically the symbols of lightning that we see in a lot of Mesopotamian art. We're going to break this video up into two parts, with the first part focusing mostly on Ishkur and Ninurta, and the second part having to do with the forked lightning itself and some of the other deities that you will see from other regions with the forked lightning symbol. We're going to start today by looking at a well-known Assyrian wall fresco. You've probably seen this labeled as Marduk fighting Tiamat, but it's a well-known fresco and it actually comes with text that tells us exactly who this is. The text in question is the myth of Ninurta and the Imdugud bird. In this myth, the Imdugud bird steals the Tablet of Destiny from the god Enlil, the head of the pantheon. Three great warriors among the gods are called forth one after the other and asked to confront the Imdugud bird. They all, for various reasons, decline the offer. Then a fourth god is called forth. This god is Ninurta, and he confronts the Imdugud bird. As you might imagine, he defeats the Imdugud bird, and the Tablet of Destiny is returned to the gods. There's a little bit more to the story, of course. Both of these figures have storm associations, but in this image we only see Ninurta with the forks of lightning. Those are the objects in his hands. You will occasionally hear the name Anzu and the name Imdigud used interchangeably. There is some linguistics behind this, which I will not go into in this video, but perhaps in a later video. Both Ninurta and the Imdigud bird have storm associations. The Imdigud bird is something of a blending of an eagle and a lion. You will notice that the body is covered in feathers, but it is the form of a lion, and it has the back feet of an eagle and the front paws of a lion. It also has the head of a lion. Lions were considered the manifestation of aggression upon the earth, and eagles were considered the manifestation of aggression in the skies. So the Imdigird bird is a manifestation of fierce aggression. Generally speaking, when you see Imdigird birds, they are female because they are nesting and they are protecting young. So the Imdigird bird also is used in a similar fashion to that of a gargoyle to protect a residence. The Imdigud bird in this myth is generally treated as being male, however. The figure on the right has iconography very similar to the storm god Ishkur, but we know that this is Ninurta in this instance because he is fighting the Imdigud bird. Were this an image of Ishkur, we would see him likely to be standing upon a, a winged animal of some sort. Often, you will see this labeled as Tiamat. You will not find any images of Tiamat that are ancient from the excavations that we have thus far found. There are no known images of Tiamat that have thus far been recovered. Another technique would be to look at where the object is found. Ishkur, whose name means wind, was associated with the Sumerian south, and Adad, whose name means lightning, was associated with the lightning storms that could be found in the south. Ishkur and Ninurta were associated with different types of storms. Ishkur was associated with the more devastating lightning and hail storms, whereas Ninurta was associated with more of the torrential downpours that could be found coming over the mountains to the north. This image is specifically of Ninurta fighting the Anzu, or Imdigud. And again, as we know from the text, which contains the entire myth of Ninurta and the Imdigud, or Anzu, bird, 
uh, we know that this is definitely Ninurta. Looking specifically at those items in his hand, you'll notice that they are very different from what we see as the standard Western zigzag for lightning. This is the symbol that you will see every single time with two or three prongs representing lightning. And any figure that has these is usually going to be a storm or a lightning god. Of interest here, you'll notice that the hand was done on backwards for both of these. This was likely accidental as we do not generally see this in images of Ninurta or Ishkur, or any other god for that matter. You will also see a bracelet on his right wrist. That is considered to be a symbol of wealth, although that might be a old interpretation. However, the clothing that you do see him wearing is actually uh, finely crafted, which would be appropriate for any deity. He is not wearing what looks to be armor or any military gear, unless you consider the uh, helm, which is more appropriately a symbol of his godhood. These next two images come from cylinder seals. Now, often again, you will see this labeled as Marduk fighting Tiamat due to the lack of Marduk fighting Tiamat images. Tiamat is simply just not depicted in Mesopotamian art. At least, she's not depicted in any of the art we have thus far found. This is probably due to the fact that she was never actually worshipped in Mesopotamia and that the text covering the Tiamat myth is very political in nature, whereas many of these other myths connect to the wider mythology. So, what are we looking at? It does not actually appear as though the deity holding lightning is fighting the serpent creature that he is standing upon. In fact, this may be a depiction of a sort of mount or a boat of the deities. In particular, you may notice that the figure on the back of the boat or serpent is not actually attacking the creature and does not have any weapons, but is facing the creature's mouth. The pose that the figure in the back that does not have the beard is taking with her hands, or assume that it is a she for the time being, is a greeting pose that is a welcoming gesture. The figure between them with the scepter is likely a minister. Now let's take a closer look at those lightning forks. You will notice that the one on the left has the three prongs that we saw before, and the one on the right only has two prongs. This may have been due to the limitations of the media. Cylinder seals are very small or it may have been an accident, or those might not even be uh, lightning bolts. It's very hard to tell in this particular image. In this fourth image, labeled Unidentified Goddess, Forked Lightning Symbol of Adad, we see a, another forked lightning, and the figure is standing atop what might be a bull or a sheep. You will notice that the forks only have two tines, which is why in the last image we couldn't for certain say that it was not lightning when one had only two tines and one had three tines. Note the hole in the top of the cylinder seal. Again, these are very small objects, and they, this one is the size of a largish bead. Given that the figure is standing atop a animal, and given that the figure has lightning in her hands, and again, we are assuming just based on expert identification that this is a female, and the fact that the figure does not have a beard, 
This at first might be assumed to be the goddess Shala. However, Shala is not depicted in this image in the normal pose in which she is depicted, so that cannot be an identification. So, in fact, this could be any of a number of deities and is likely one that we are completely unaware of. This fifth image is really interesting in that you see an image of Ishkur with the two forked lightning and he is standing on a roaring weather beast which appears to be vomiting. Some images show him vomiting lightning. What I find really interesting about this image is specifically the two individuals that are approaching Ishkur. They are actually depicted as larger than Ishkur, though Ishkur is the deity in this image. Here we see a return to the three-pronged form with the wavy lines representing the lightning, and lightning forks are coming above and below the fist. And another, almost identical, but facing the opposite direction. Now, since those images are not always very clear, let's show a line drawing representing them. In this line drawing, you can see the two-pronged and the three-pronged forms of the lightning, as well as the form where it comes above the fist and the form where it comes above and below the fist. The roaring weather beast on the image, the line drawing to the left, is a very iconic image associated with Ishkur Adad. In this next image, you will see that we can still identify the deity as being Ishkur slash Adad because he is standing atop a roaring weather beast. Interestingly, in this next tenth image, we see the goddess Shala, and she is thought to be holding rain here instead of lightning, but you can see lightning coming from the mouth of the roaring weather beast. Note Shala's pose. This nude pose with the arms up is indicative of her being of Levantine origin and not Mesopotamian origin. This is the traditional way to show that a deity comes from the Levant. Alrighty, that's enough for uh, today. Let's pick up here next week, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Catch you later. Bye-bye.